that had nothing to do with rendering beer fat, but I just thought it was cool. Well, after talking to some of you guys and some of the comments that were left, uh, I'm going to show you guys what I think is the best way for rendering bear fat. Uh, probably the easiest way for rendering bear fat. We're going to make uh, some real clean um, fat to be able to cook with or whatever. And uh, as well as, um, I can't tie this up. As well as crackling or scrunchings, depending on where you're from, whatever you're, they're called. This. Basically, it's fried up fat. Two hours later. There, it's just double knotted. It'll never come off. Slow cooker, cutting board, bare fat. Some stuff is real clean. That's off the big bear that we got last spring. Show you a picture now. So, all we're gonna do. Where's my knife gone? Ah, here it is. Okay. So all we're gonna do. Make sure you got a nice sharp knife because it's like like a tomato, right? You want sharp knives when you're dealing with tomatoes. Same kind of thing with fat. If not, you're just gonna be mushing and smearing it all over the place. Nice uh, clean fat here. I cleaned all my stuff prior to when I butchered the bear. And uh, you can see here how nice this is. Look at that. Nice clean bear fat. No fur, no meat left on it. I cleaned it up before I froze it. So, simple enough. All I'm gonna do is cut it in strips and then I'll cut those strips into small cubes. So the size uh, the size I like to cut it are just about the size of I don't know, think of like dime size. You get the idea, nice and small. If you cut it too big, it's gonna take longer and you're not gonna be able to render as much out of it. So, take your time, cut it right at the beginning. I've, uh, I've actually hunted bears and I went to field dress them and as soon as you go to unzip them, you actually get clear oil. That's what it is, it's their fat. Some of it stays in like an oil-like state inside of them and uh, it just kind of pours out. So many people when they go to zip up, you know, zip up a bear, open a bear up, they, they think they hit the bladder somehow or, or whatever, but no, it's actually just oil. So I can tell you right now, just from looking at this piece, this came right off the back of the bear. Nice and pink, very healthy bear this came from. You can kind of see how the cutting board and everything's getting real slippery. That's why uh, take your time and do this. You don't want to have an accident with the knife or anything. So everybody now, a lot of you guys are in the middle of bear hunting. Keep your fat. You don't know what you're throwing away. Half of the reason for harvesting a bear is for this gold right here. You will have a whole other reason for harvesting bears. Also, everybody out there, be safe. Be safe out there when you're hunting, whether it's deer or whatever it is this year. Be safe. If you're up in a stand, especially you deer hunters, wear your harnesses, guys. Go home to your families at the end of the day. Takes a bit of time doing it this way, but 
totally worth it. You want to make sure you get all the meat out of the fat though. And this is not something, if you have bear in the freezer and you like to drag it out over the year and hold on to stuff, this is not something you want to hold on to for too long in the freezer. Especially on rendered fat like this, it will go rancid even in the freezer. Um, I've heard of as early as three to four months. I've never had anything go bad. Actually, I've never had anything go bad on me because I, I use it usually too quick. But I've kept it in there, you know, seven, eight months. And it's been perfectly fine. But um, I'm not sure why people are getting different results. Maybe different bears, different enzymes. I have no idea, but that's just the way it is. You can also keep this uh, slightly frozen as well. It'll help with... Uh, Cutting this up. Now, you could keep a couple nice strips like this and let that render down and you'll end up with big pieces of crackling. There's different ways of doing it too, but I am going to keep a couple like this to throw in there and that will be used. Then I can just put that aside and if I wanna use that and throw it in the pan with some bacon or something, or not necessarily bacon, bacon has enough fat as it is, but I can throw it right in the pan like that with some eggs and uh, the, the oils will, will come out, the rest of the oil will come out of it and fry the eggs up and stuff. I can do something like that as well. But I will keep a couple, but for the majority of it, I'm gonna cube it up. These dime sized pieces are slowly turned into quarter size pieces like I said at my body temperature it's already just saturated it's turning from fat into like oil now, if you guys like this kind of stuff I shouldn't be waving a knife around but anyways if you guys like this kind of stuff where I do little tricks little cooking ideas I made cheese last night that was cool but uh, if you guys like this kind of stuff uh, let me know in the comments and uh, Maybe I'll start doing a few more little things like this, and especially when the adventure season is slow. Look at that piece. Look at that. Look how wonderful that is. Yeah. Well, the dollar size pieces now, or as we call them in Canada, loonies. Oh, wait. Yeah, in the United States you call them bills, so no. Not that big. This big. Not this big. Vending machines work way more often. When I was in the States, it's one thing I noticed trying to put that dollar bill in the stupid machines and they're like, no, it's partially wrinkled you're not we're not accepting that so you're sitting there like trying to on the corner of the machine you're trying to get it all straight just because you want something to drink it still doesn't work we don't have that problem again we take a loony little brown coin and whoop, problem solved still lots lots oh yeah almost has a buttery smell to it raw bear fat like that has kind of a buttery smell hard to explain but that's what it should smell like if it's nice and healthy the fat is uh rather sweet smelling so that's it i guess i could use uh Spoon, so I'm not a man at all. Anyways, um, turn the slow cooker on high. Give it a stir. For the first, uh, let's say, about, I don't know, half hour, you're going to want to stir it every probably 10 minutes. And that's just to stop anything from, you know, possibly 
burning. I've never had the issue, but better be safe and sorry because everybody out there is probably using a different slow cooker anyways. Mine's pretty simple, it just has a low and high setting. So I put mine on high, stir it a little frequently for the first half hour or so until you get a good base of oil underneath. And then uh, check it every half hour to an hour after that, give it a good stir. That's about a half hour later. You can see kind of on the bottom now, there's a nice, eh, I can't really see it's too much in the way. But you'll have to trust me, it's getting pretty oily down there. This is two and a half hours in. You see now a lot more oil and all the pieces are getting smaller and smaller as it's uh, rendered out. There you have it there now. This is about three and a half hours in. You see how everything's starting to crunch up. So what you're looking for is I'll take this one for instance. You see how that one's kind of like white and puffy looking that's what you want now there's still a bunch in here that aren't quite there yet they're still kind of gelatinous looking you don't want that so we're gonna leave this going for like maybe another half hour or so there so that's all pretty much rendered out now we're just going to separate the uh crackling or scrunchings whatever you want to call it you see how it's all like kind of got that uh fluffy crispiness look to it that's what you want now all I'm going to do is just turn this off let it cool down just for a little bit so it's easier to manage so now that it's cooled down a bit you want to, oh, you want to remove the crackling so you're just scooping it out I like to put a few paper towels in a bowl just to help drain some of the uh, Rendered out fat off it. Oh, I need a bigger bowl or a second bowl. Good thing I know magic. Okay. So we've got uh, two bowls full right there. Still a little bit in there. Um, I'm just going to let it settle. So that's what you want to do after you get this uh, taken out, you get the scrunchings taken out. You're just going to let it settle for about maybe 10 minutes or so. Let all the particles uh, sit back down at the bottom. Then you're just going to take your ladle, skim up the oil slowly, and fill up your bottles. And then you'll refrigerate them. You can freeze them at two if you want. They'll last longer in the freezer. But now that the oil is rendered, it should last longer. When it's not rendered, it will go rancid even in your freezer. Bare fat will go rancid in your freezer. So make sure that you do this, preferably within a few months after har harvesting your bear. This stuff is amazing. Now that that's settled, just as I said, we're just gonna skim up a little bit at a time, nice and slow, so you don't stir it up too much. And then you're just gonna bottle this oil. This is the process of why I let it cool down a little bit. It's nothing worse. I mean, I could use a glove as well, but I'm too stubborn for that. These bottles get pretty hot on you if you didn't let it cool down at all. Now. Let me show you the first one we got there. Look at that. I'm going to turn this light on here so you can see a little better. So you can see right through the bottle. It's nice and clear. Hello. Pretty neat. Look at that. Beautiful rendered down bare fat. Over here, I'll tell you what the plan is for that in a second. And here are the scrunchings. Nice, crispy, yet fluffy scrunchings. Really good. You put a little pinch of salt on that. It's so fresh, it's so good tasting. I can't explain it, you have to try it for yourself. Well, there you have it, guys. 
bare fat, rendered down. This is the leftover stuff that was left in the bottom of this. It's a little more dirtier. That's going to be used for towns. I'll show a video of that on Instagram. And then we have our scrunchions. You salt this, have a little bit with breakfast here and there sparingly. I mean, it is pure fat. So keep that in mind for uh, your health. Unless, you know, you know, you have someone you, in your life who, you know, you might want to give a heart attack to. Give that up. Give it to them. Perfect. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, that's how you, in my opinion, this is the best way to render down bare fat. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Yeah. That, uh, that uh, throw didn't uh, happen like I planned. Uh, but I, I do have one last thing. This stuff will stay clear if it's kept at room temperature or slightly warmer than room temperature. That's what's unique about bare fat. But once you put it in the fridge and cool down enough, it will solidify, turn white, the same as bacon grease will. Um, so that's that. Um, if you guys do like this type of video, give me a thumbs up or leave a comment so I, I know you guys do like it. And uh, I'll do some more like this. They're not the outdoors adventures type of stuff, but uh, they are fun to do and I do enjoy doing them. So just uh, let me know. Thanks again, guys. Appreciate it. Peace.